14.1. Suppose you'd like to find the volume of a solid. One way to do that is to approximate the volume using a collection of boxes. For each box, the base would be change of x, change of y. And the height can be f evaluated at some point in the base of the box. So the volume would just be height times base. And we can add the boxes up. Suppose we were to increase the number of boxes indefinitely. If this limit exists, we call it the double integral of f over r. Evaluating double integrals this way is tedious and rarely done. Fortunately, we have a more practical method. The method involves slicing the solid as if it were a loaf of, loaf of bread. For a fixed value of x, the slice of bread has area a of x and width dx. Add the slices up to get the total volume of the loaf, which is this double integral. Fubini's theorem tells us that we can slice our loaf of bread either way. To show you how these double integrals work, I'd like to do an example. First, let's look at the different ways to slice this. If the inner integral is dx, we are fixing y. And a of y is the area of the slice for a fixed value of y. If the inner integral is dy, we are fixing x. And a of x is the area of the slice for a fixed value of x. I will do this example. My inner integral involves dy. So y is changing x is fixed. Treat x as if it were just a number. And now do the inner integral. It's an integral with respect to y with x fixed. Once you find that inner integral, you can replace it back into the double integral. And you are now ready to integrate, this time with respect to x. This second integral is straightforward for you. It's just one variable now. And this is what we get. Let's see that again. Okay, so we have a different example. The point of this example is to show you that although you can evaluate the inner integral, um, I'm sorry, although you can evaluate the integral in either order, uh, you don't necessarily want to do it uh, both ways. You want to choose the way that is easiest. For this problem, it is easier to integrate first with respect to x and then with respect to y. 
to see that this is the best order, try reversing the order and see what kind of problems arise when you go to integrate. In order to do the inner integral, we need, um, we need to do a little substitution. Keep in mind, this time we are fixing y. We are now ready to evaluate the inner integral. Substitute the evaluation of the inner integral back into the double integral. And integrate with respect to y. I have one more problem I'd like to do. And that is an average value problem. We are averaging the value of this function over the square, which has an area of 4. The order of integration does not matter. And this time when I integrate the inner integral, I will keep it contained in the double integral. This makes everything more compact. Evaluate the inner integral and then integrate and evaluate the outer integral. And we get zero. An average of zero is somewhat surprising until we look at the surface and the region we see that the volume above the region is equal to the volume below the region, giving an average of zero.